Greetings, friends at Aberdeen. This is a presentation that Kelly Stickley of Resident Services and I co-facilitated last year about this time. As we moved into the holidays, we wanted to have conversation with some of you about the fact that sometimes the holidays are a time of very much mixed emotions. Never has that been more true than this year. So this will be a recap of that presentation with me narrating. I'm gonna share the slides with you and uh, we will just go through them. As a reminder, if you attended the meeting or if you didn't, I hope these will be some good tips for you as together we move into the days of December and beyond. So I'm gonna to try to share the screen here. All right, you're gonna see me up in the right-hand corner and hear my voice as we talk about navigating the holiday blues. We all know that the holidays are usually what we fantasize about all year. We look forward to them. And we certainly have a lot of expectations that society puts on us when we watch TV or listen to the radio. We have our own expectations that the holidays will be a joyous time spent with friends and family. Um, and it certainly harkens back to how we were raised and the memories we have of how you're supposed to do the holidays and certainly the things that made the holidays fun and joyous for us. Again, one of the reasons that we're doing this presentation is to acknowledge out loud that not everybody feels happy during the holidays. And there was a recent study from the American Psychological Association that found almost 40% of people surveyed said that as much as they look forward to the holiday season, their stress definitely ramped up. Now, why do we experience this stress? Well, first of all, it's not on the slide, but this era of a pandemic is meaning that we have to change just about everything about the way that we celebrate the holidays. So I just wanna acknowledge that up front. Certainly there is the pressure to be cheerful and merry during the holidays. We do have all these powerful memories of past Decembers with family, friends, spouses, children, and we so much long to recreate that as we move into the days of November and December. Certainly holidays bring us poignant reminders of loved ones who are no longer on this earth with us. And um, we feel filled with emotion as we remember the holidays that we spent together. I don't know if there's been a lonelier holiday for any of us than this year of COVID when we so long to be with those who are special to us. And in so many ways, we have to get used to spending more time alone, not going out to big gatherings. Many of you I know just out of concern for safety are sort of hanging tight within your own apartment or certainly within the building. So it can be a lonely time anyway, surviving this pandemic. And I think the holidays sort of make that loneliness more acute. Some people, I'm not sure this is true here so much, but certainly some people get stressed during the holidays because they want to celebrate and give gifts in a way that creates financial hardship on them. And they feel badly that they can't make the holidays happen in the style that they're wishing they could um, afford. So just to acknowledge that may be something going on for people you know and love. I, it may be a financially hard time anyway because of job loss or job change during COVID-19. And so as this season comes, there may be stress among those you know who want to provide a good Christmas for children and may be struggling to do so. And then last of all, I'm so aware because today happens to be a beautiful day as I'm recording this, quite sunny and cold outside. We so long for the sunlight this time of year. And I think we all remember that as we approach the winter solstice on December 21st, each day, each time of daylight is getting shorter and shorter and shorter until that time after December 21st, when once again, 
the day start to lengthen bit by bit, but we are craving sunlight. And I encourage you to find it however you can this season, even if you just go and um, spend some time in a sunny window, it makes such a difference. So when we feel this pressure to feel merry during the holidays, one of the most important reminders we can give ourselves is that there is no obligation to feel any certain way at any certain time. If you're a person of faith, you may kind of have this faith uh, pressure to be joyful because it is the season of joy. If you're Christian, it's the season when we celebrate Jesus' birth. But I want to try to lift that pressure from your shoulders today and just give you the reminder that there is no right or wrong way to feel when it comes to emotions that bubble up, just whatever we're feeling is ours and it's valid on that day and in that moment. And again, an important reminder is that when we have this pressure to feel merry or to feel religiously joyful and we think, uh oh, I shouldn't have this emotion, we want to kind of push it away and act as if we're not having it or we may feel guilty that we're having these negative emotions of sadness or anger or loneliness or despair. And we may try to sort of shut the lid on those emotions. Our suggestion, Kelly's and mine and Patty Romeo's, is instead of using all this energy to run away from the negative emotions, just go ahead and acknowledge them to yourself, maybe acknowledge them to somebody else and um, maybe write them down on a piece of paper, but, but just acknowledge this is how I'm feeling this year. I hope to feel better, but for right now, I feel like a Scrooge or I feel like a crab or I feel like I want to throw something. Again, there's the reminder here, when you put pressure on yourself to feel a certain way, you may come across as um, not grateful. You might be experiencing a lot of internal guilt and it just becomes a cycle then of becoming a Scrooge because you feel badly that you're not acting or feeling the way you believe you're supposed to feel during the holidays. So this suggestion is to step out of that cycle of negative emotions by just saying, hey, right now is hard. Say this to yourself or to somebody you trust. Today's hard. I don't feel the way I wish I might feel during the holidays, but you know the expression, it is what it is. This is just where I am today. There's certainly a lot of changing roles that come with getting older and not being able to host holidays or attend holidays in the way that you used to. You certainly in the midst of COVID are not hosting big gatherings in your apartment. And again, because of COVID, you may or may not be going anywhere to be with family. Certainly, regardless of COVID, regardless of a pandemic, many of us have experienced mobility changes, which mean it's not so easy to travel. It's not always so easy just to navigate going in a car to a loved one's home. So it's important to acknowledge, I didn't really want these changes, but they happened. You, you may grieve that you're no longer the bounteous, warm host that you wish you could be in years past. And even if there's a small part of you that is sort of relieved that you don't have to host anymore, um, it always is challenging to adjust to a change. So I like this advice to just have grace with yourself. Don't burden yourself with all these negative shoulds, but just have grace and know this year is different these times are different, my situation in life is different, and it's going to be okay, and I will eventually grow into this new normal. A great suggestion to navigate some of this change is to maybe sit down and make a list of what the holidays have typically meant to you in the past and now, and then as you think about traditions and activities that have been your favorites, maybe prioritize them, which are the ones that are most important? And is there a way we can do them a little differently this year? You know, many families are using social media or video conferencing just like this to be in touch with one another and to try to have a way 
to celebrate some of the traditions that they can't do in person. You may remember there's an opportunity if you're interested and you're not somebody who has a computer or is comfortable with a computer, there are times you can sign up with me, the chaplain, and schedule a chance to have a video conference with your family. We will put you in the big boardroom in the administrative offices. And this is true for independent living. And then we can schedule a video conference with members of your family. So you can sort of um, recreate a gathering if you can't gather in person due to precautions or distance. And then setting boundaries is really important sort of feel free to give yourself permission to say no to some things that perhaps others are pressuring you to do. If you don't feel up to them or you don't have the physical stamina for them, it's important to be able to say, I'd like to do this, but I'm gonna need to tell you no. Or a workaround is to say to something that someone invites you to maybe in their apartment, I'd like to say yes provisionally so that you know I want to come and I hope to come, but can we agree right now that it'll be okay if I call you on that day and say I just don't feel up to it. So you sort of establish ahead of time that you may or may not feel like doing something. Holidays, as we all know, can be a time of an uptick in grief, whether your loss is a recent one or whether it's been quite a while ago and this quote kind of sums it up. Christmas music, holiday parties, which will be different this year, festive decorations that were meant to bring joy served as painful reminders of my loss. So even if your loss was long, long ago, holidays are the time when we are besieged in painful ways and good ways with memories of the folks who have brought our life meaning. So don't be surprised, don't feel badly, don't feel guilty if grief that you thought was sort of long in the past has sort of bubbled up again. It's just part of the deep emotions that holidays and uh, religious times of year bring with them. It's normal. So what can you do? Trust, first of all, that grief is a part of healing. So again, whether your grief is fresh or it's sort of come back to you when you felt that you had moved past it. The path to healing is being able to experience the grief, feel it, acknowledge it to yourself, perhaps to others, and that will be the door through which further healing happens. We've already talked about setting boundaries with yourself, sort of take an inventory of what do I feel able to do and what are some things I can let go of. Right now, I think we so long to control something when this virus is something which we cannot fully control. So focus on the things that you can control in terms of, uh, do I want to adapt this tradition? Or do I wanna just um, put that aside this year, this particular tradition? Planning is helpful. So just instead of letting things happen to you, think ahead about something you can plan that you look forward to. Perhaps it's simply a, a, a schedule, a time when you know you will call someone important to you so that you have that to anticipate. I think we all need things, especially this year, that we can look forward to. And we've said it in many ways, but give yourself permission to feel a range of emotions. And they may sort of go all over the map this particular season. I notice with myself that to, because today the sun is out, I feel very buoyant. Whereas days when it's cloudy and drizzly, I allow myself to, to say to myself and to others, ooh, this is kind of a tough day. It's just kind of a blah day. Continue your connections somehow with your loved one through phone calls, letters, perhaps you do email, perhaps you do video conferences such as Zoom or Skype or FaceTime. And please, please, please know that you can ask for help with us in the administrative office, particularly me as chaplain or, um, I started to say Patrice, Patty Romeo 
in the resident services office who is filling that role while Kelly Stickley continues to be out on maternity leave. Ask one of us for help and let us think together about the resources that we have at our disposal. Again, this is kind of a, a summary of what we've already said, but certainly COVID is asking us to adjust our expectations greatly this year. Doing something for others can often bring a sense of well being, even if you have to kind of give yourself a little push to do it. The response to the Kirk Care food drive for those in need within our Kirkwood community has been fantastic on the part of Aberdeen. We filled a number of barrels of food for those who are going through hard times. And I think those of you that have participated have felt a sense of well-being there is something i can do at a time when so little feels within my control likewise if you have an interest in donating to the good samaritan fund for presbyterian manners of mid america that enables you to provide for another resident who might be suffering financial hardships not of their own making so Talk to the chaplain, talk to Patty Romeo if you're eager to do something for others. The importance of seeking sunlight, we've talked about. Many of you know that exercise is gonna come up. The importance of moving to the extent that you are able in your own apartment, coming down to exercise classes, just walking the halls really can be a source of well being when your spirits feel down. There is that important thing of staying hydrated, trying to drink enough water, which I'm gonna do right now. Trying to make sure that you get your fruits and vegetables as well as these wonderful, yummy desserts that we get around the holidays. Alcohol can be something we turn to when we are unhappy and are just seeking to numb those feelings or we believe that we'll create a sense of well-being if we have a little something to boost our mood. Actually, when we're depressed, alcohol doesn't do much to lift our spirits. It may actually depress them more. So alcohol in moderation, especially in this season, it will help you if you can make some plans to do something in the time ahead. Look at the activities and classes that are being offered on the sign-up table near the mailboxes. Um, perhaps you can speak with some of your neighbors about what new, what new traditions are you all creating this year in the midst of the pandemic to sort of take the place of those things that we cannot do. And then lastly, both myself and Patty Romeo have resources we can refer you to if you are feeling the need to speak with a professional counselor. Most professional counseling these days in the time of pandemic is done via video, just like most doctor's appointments are being done that way. So we can help you get set up with that kind of arrangement if you're feeling the need to talk to a mental health professional. It's doable. When might you wanna think about seeking support from a counselor, professional counselor? Look at this laundry list here. Your holiday blues might cause you to feel any of these symptoms. And you kind of know yourself and can recognize yourself here. Exhausted or fatigued more than usual. Sleeping more or less than normal. If there are things that you normally look forward to and enjoy and you just find you're feeling blah about them right now, that might be a red flag. If you find yourself having trouble making decisions, you just um, are sort of feeling befuddled and stuck, that might be a signal to think about talking to a professional. Withdrawing from friends and family, certainly there's been some forced need to withdraw during the pandemic. But if you find yourself not even wanting to interact with friends or family, when usually that brings you meaning, that can be a red flag. And again, I think we've all had feelings of loneliness during the pandemic, but when you're feeling overwhelmed by loneliness, that's something we wanna pay attention to. Also, it's normal to be feeling irritable or angry. 
that the pandemic is here, that we're not able to celebrate holidays as we usually are. Those things are normal. But if you're feeling kind of a overwhelming sense of anger that makes you unable to really settle down, or it's again, interfering with sleeping, eating, the ability to interact with somebody else, even just by phone, pay attention to that. And the bottom line is if these feelings directly interfere with your functioning, your ability to sort of um, get up and do the things you normally do in a day, wash your face, brush your teeth, see about getting food. If you're not able to do those things because you're just so spent, then it is time to talk to either your doctor or a mental health professional. And we want to say directly, if you find yourself having thoughts of suicide or harming yourself in some way, know that we want to get you support. We have hotline numbers, Patty and I do, available, and we are here as well for you to speak with. So it's hard to be reminded that sometimes suicide comes to mind this time of year, but we all know that this in particular is a very challenging year. And so if you're having feelings of, I just don't know how much more of this I can take, please reach out to Patty and me, Patty or me immediately. I wanna give you an invitation for those of you all that find worship meaningful we are approaching at the end of December, the winter solstice on December 21st. And so just a little upstream from that on Wednesday afternoon, December 16th, we're gonna have two back-to-back in-person worship services in the multi-purpose room for which you do need to sign up because as you are aware, we have attendance limits. But this will be a worship service of music, lovely guitar music, readings, sacred readings, and passages of comfort, reflections of comfort through some, some um, other readings as we approach the winter solstice. So be on the lookout for the sign-up list for the longest night of the year services on the afternoon of Wednesday, December 16th. The sign-up sheets will go out on the Bravo table near the administrative offices the Monday before on December 14th. And if you have any questions about that, feel free to check in with me, Julie. So as we end this time, I just wanna invite you to reflect what resonated with you in this presentation. Think again, sort of do a quick inventory. What changes are you experiencing this year? Both changes mandated by COVID, but also just changes in your own health, in your own status. You may be um, someone who's newly widowed this year, or you may have lost someone important in the year since we last observed the holidays. And think about what are some ways you have dealt in the past with the stress and grief that the holidays has sometimes brought? And lastly, what coping skills do you think will work best for you this year? So again, we wish you well, Patty Romeo and I and all of the Aberdeen staff, and we're sharing this program with you because we are so acutely aware that this can be a difficult time, these holidays. So we want to help you through them we want to help you cope. We want to help you find some joy. And we hope that you will reach out to us if you have thoughts, questions, reactions. If anybody would like a copy of this slide presentation, please contact me, your chaplain, and I'm happy to make that available to you. So we wish you peace. And I will see if I can sign off here telling you goodbye and hoping that we will see each other a good deal during this month of December. Bye for now. <laughs>